We'll add a little more because we're um, doing investing now before we weren't, but it's still slow growth. So we're looking at ways we can then build that up to so it's got a, a secure amount. And some of that will come from the general fund itself, and some of it will come from um, investment interest opportunities, but council really has to ask themselves, <coughs> in my opinion, uh, where can we look to change something so we can increase revenue to match, <coughs> match cost? Match, you know, cost of living doesn't just impact labor. It impacts materials. It impacts everything that the city does. <coughs> and if it's going up 2.2%, you can bet that's going to be city-wide. And so the general fund, we've got the other funds taken care of with their rate hikes this year. <coughs> so <coughs> the big one, though, is the general fund. We want to make sure it's healthy so that it can help out streets. And it can help out other areas. And of course, it's big. It's got the big cost of, you know, uh, public safety and community services, courts, uh, parks. I mean, all those, you know, vital city services depend upon the liquidity of the general fund. We don't want to lose that ability. <coughs> that's that's why I'm saying. And the only thing I can think of, franchise fees is one area where you, where if we bring in more business. Um, and there is another cell company that's trying to come into town. That will increase a little bit. I mean, that's something, but we don't know. We can't count on that until we get more businesses coming into town, like cell, you know, cell companies or others like that. <coughs> um, as far as the state shared revenues, we have no control over those. <coughs> uh, service revenues, somewhat. Um, and then, oh, hi, Josh. Okay, I you know that Josh joined us. And I think investment interest, but I have it always leave it settled. Do you want a paper copy of this, or do you have your tablet? Okay. okay. <coughs> so, um, one thing I want, I did want to tell the, the council about is utility taxes. They're really, that's the one place where you have flexibility. It's not governed by state law. It's wide open. <coughs> And to give an example, the city of Milton has 9% on their utility taxes for water, sewer, and storm. Um, that kind of increase here, and I'm not saying you do that, but I'm saying if you did, <coughs> we'd see probably a 40 or 50 thousand dollar bump somewhere in that area. Um, so we're sitting at 200 thousand utility. Oh, six percent. And that's most cities started there. And now a lot of cities. I mean, and I was talking to um, a public works manager, Lance, and. He's even seen some somebody that have what, 20%? Up to. Yeah. So I, I'm not saying we have to do that. I'm saying we need to think about this. Maybe not in 15, but certainly down the road. How are we going to get the revenues up to match cost increases? <coughs> That's the one. And, and of course, if we get businesses coming into town with the road improvements, that will help. It definitely will help bring in franchise fees and other fees to help so offset that. Um, so that's just something I wanted to make you aware of. For 2015, the general fund, um, if you take out the transfer and we'll get into the project for City Hall, it's, it's in good shape. It manages itself just fine. <coughs> so I'll get into that more as we go. And I did put down uh, descriptions for you to look at the general fund revenue sources. If you have any questions about reading anything about this, the DNO tax, I looked at the DNO tax to see if we could go up there. It's max. The state law, which was passed in 1982, states you cannot go past 0.2 percent. So. So that's our, our really our biggest revenue. And um, anyhow, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me regarding that. I'm not going to read all this to you. <coughs> uh, street repairs and maintenance. I'm on page, what page am I on? <laughs> Probably five. I can't see page numbers on here. Six. Okay. So I'm on street repairs and maintenance. If I go too fast, just pull me down. So the first part just shows you how many miles we have of paved roads and gravel roads and trails and all kinds of transportation. Then I went to street revenue sources. So we have a dedicated revenue and motor vehicle fuel excise tax. And we have interfund transfers coming from the free utility funds and the general fund that equal 200000 I put on the prior on the page I said 100000 but I meant 200. Um, transportation benefit district, we talked about that early in the year. Oh, Leanne, oh, your mouth is full. <laughs> I know you wanted to speak to this, so. <coughs> well, I thought it was going to come up more when Lance was giving his presentation. Okay. Too. But that's fine. I know. Um, <coughs> just taking like 37 and a half cents, and we get just under 3 cents. For 
Yeah, I know. So, and on the um, transportation benefit district, we had talked about this earlier in the year, and we even had a public hearing on it, and decided to place it on hold because we were waiting to see what King County did because they were talking about the $60 car tax and we did not want um, the people here in Pacific to be hit with a $60 and a $20 on top of it because we buy without a boat to the public public. We can raise it to a $20 car tax um, fee that could be designated funding for free. And so I think it's something that we may want to think about in revisiting and that failed in King County. Only Seattle is doing something so it doesn't affect us so that we can build up that plan for street repairs and stuff. And I think Lance is going to speak more to that during his presentation as well. And one thing I can tell you is that there are, the Jews have been around a long time. There are many cities that have made use of them. City of Oregon is the closest one that I know of, and I've spoken with their city administrator. And I asked them, what's the, what's the lag time like? Like, when you, when you institute the district, how long does it take to receive the first revenue? He told me seven months. He said it has to, it's a minimum of six months to get everything set up on the county side. And so he said that they started seeing revenues in seven months. And our, and our estimate was $105,000 that we came up with. I don't know if you remember the presentation earlier in the year. I still have it. And if you want to look at that, it's, it really spells out the whole plan, um, TBD in a nutshell. Um, there's flexibility. It's what you use it for. You don't have to just use it for you know, road repairs. You can use it for projects that really they can save up. Some cities save up the, um, their funds for, for big projects. I know that this council has spoken pretty um, consistently about we need to fill, fix our roads. I mean, like overlays and things like that, um, as, uh, chip seals, as much as the, the big projects where we're going after grants. So I think that's what this looks like it would be dedicated for. Uh, but he says it takes very little staff time over there, mostly just the finance director who works on it. And then you have a separate meeting for it. It's very rare. It's not it's very short. <coughs> so well, there would be a lot of paperwork we'd have to go through to get it set up, but it's something to consider uh, if you want to do it for 15 or 16, however you want to approach that. Um, the road repair plan, go ahead. Are there other, other revenue streams that can be collected under a TV if the size <coughs> a car tax? I think so. I, I know that there's different kinds of things you can pass under it. I've read it today, but I have to look more in detail of it. There's more than just the tax. Yes, that's true. And some of them, I believe, have to be going on, but a $20 car tax is not. <clears throat> so we would look at all aspects of it, and we would bring it to a committee first, like finance committee, to go over it. We haven't even gotten to that part. So I'm not saying we should hurry up and do it by December 31st, but it's something we should certainly take to um, finance, I mean, if the council wants, and the mayor wants, and go over and start looking into it. It's a viable form of, for, of consistent revenue dedicated to the street. You can make it that way, and then it stays there as opposed to property taxes, which can be used anywhere. General fund usually, and then you decide where you transfer it. <coughs> the street fund is um, in some kind of dire straits next year uh, because it just doesn't have enough revenue. And even with 200,000 <coughs> plus 100,000, the revenue that it gets 120, it's 320,000 is not enough to pay for all the repairs we're doing. So it comes out negative in the fund balance. I mean, not the fund balance, but in the expenditures to exceeding revenues. And the same with this year, it's going to be like that. So it doesn't have a big balance to begin with. We need to look at, you know. And I know you, Vic, that you talked today. You're talking with um, a waste management, and, and there's some thought about maybe putting some franchise fees towards that. That's not that's an option. We just have to remember the general fund and what that relies on too. So and franchise fees are higher than budgeted this year so far, by the way. So I have a soft number in there for it next year, <coughs> like most of those numbers in revenue. So the road repair report that's was really a giant one. It's also on your email. The second email I sent you, I forgot to send it. And if you want to look at it, you can. Oh, sorry. Um, and it just speaks to the project for 2015 and then whatever roads repairs we're going to be doing. And Lance can answer any questions on this. Right, Lance? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's the one. Him and Jim have the knowledge of that. But what we want to do this year, this is not going to be the finished budget tonight, but by a week from Friday, I want to have some numbers from you guys so I can put it together. I have to have it to the city clerk and to you, to you um, council members, the preliminary budget. It'll be the final preliminary budget, and then after that, it'll be the final one. And what I would like to see from you or hear from you is what streets do you want to have shift seal, whatever maintenance you need. 
what's the priority that you have, and then we'll see how it fits into the budget. And going forward to next year, we'll, we're, we're going to do this earlier. We're going to do it in like June, and we're going to come out with the projects you want. But for now, I know streets are very important, and we want to dedicate funds for that so we can start knocking off the um, roads that need to be repaired. And so, and we want the citizens to know this too, because whatever we're spending money on, they're watching. And, if they, and I know that they want their roads to be taken care of as well. And so we want to say, okay, what's the road? Here's the plan. We have one there, but it's kind of loose, and we want to tighten it up. And we need to know that the numbers we have, the dollars, are good, and they tie to the budget. So that's why I want to bring this up. It's, uh, to me, it's very important so that when you say, are the roads getting repaired, we can say, yes, we're doing A, B, C this year, you know, D, E, F next year, and go forward like that. <coughs> so, you know, go over this schedule. In future meetings, we can discuss it. Uh, in committee, we can. But I'd like to have some, a little idea of what you want for 2015. And 15 is going to be a challenge because we already have in the budget dedicated numbers to take care of Chipsfield. Uh, but let's look at long term. You know, whether for the sorts of revenue we're going to have and what we can do to build it up so we can get this plan taken care of. <coughs> Any comments or questions about that? Well, I think maybe one thing we kind of need to think about, too, and I hope I'm not feeling anybody's thunder, <laughs> but um, as far as like a transportation district, too, and building up funds for major projects and going after funding, like West Valley is going to be, you know, it's going to be all ours. Even that section that belongs to King County in Algona, eventually it will belong to Pacific. King County doesn't want it, they're already knocking on our door, take it. We're saying we don't want it because we don't want it. It's not fixed. <laughs> we don't have the money to fix this. But eventually what's going to happen, I've already been told by King County, if there is another slide, they're not fixing it. They're not going to clean it up. They're going to close the road, and that's that. It's their road, and they can do it. That section where we had the slide last time. Um, the side closest to the hill belongs to King County. The side on Pacific belongs to Algona. Algona wants us to take over that section. It's all in Pacific, but we don't own that section of the road. Have we tried kind of a multi-point approach to saying we'll take it if you provide 30 percent of the funding to fix it this first time? Algona, you provide 30 percent, and we'll provide the other 40. We're trying different things. There are different conversations that are going on. Right now, we're not taking the road. We're saying, no, we can't afford it. <laughs> right. But some things so that everybody that. takes that stance, everyone's taking that stance because right. whoever has it has 100% of the obligation. Right. So <coughs> but, and, and those, I mean, there's different things that we're looking at and different options that are being talked about with King County, but I don't think we've ever had this conversation with council or I've ever brought it to your attention that that's kind of what's going on is King County has met with us saying, you need to take that road. There's also a road on the West Hill that they're saying you need to take over that road. It's in your city. <laughs> and again, we're saying, well, let's take back. Let's see, you know, how we make this feasible. You know, my question, first thing was to them, well, what's in it for us? Kind of thing. Um, so I just wanted council to be aware of that too. That transportation district too, with you know, you could start putting some of that money aside <coughs> to take care of West Valley because eventually, what's going to happen when that transfer station goes in at Algona? It's West Valley's going to be good from <laughs> Ellingson all the way north and from Sumner all the way south. The section that's not going to be fixed <laughs> is in Pacific. Just a heads up. There you go.
let's take one step at a time. So this year, we have three funds that are being closed. They are the 206, 207, 208. 206 and 207 are related to the LID, the three uh, the LID3. Um, and then the fourth, the, the 208, excuse me, the third one is the fire truck, which I've already talked with um, Verfa, and I've talked with uh, Mark, and he's cool with them closing that and taking all the funds. They don't have any, um, stay on it, they don't have any records on it. So, uh, so that's, that's the bottom of that is 600000 the top end is 700000 There's some property that owes us money and they're trying to sell it so they can pay us it's 100000 So it's tried out. Anyway, so it could be up to 700000 that we transfer in and by state law you have to transfer into the general fund. <coughs> then, in what I'm projecting for 2015 is a transfer to the 300 the Muni Capital Improvement Fund, um, which is going to have a beginning balance of 400,000 to transfer 450 in there to put it up to 850,000. And then next year it'll probably be over 900,000. I talked to Lance. I know this is sticker shock. I get that, um, and he's going to speak to this. As a matter of fact, he probably could speak to it now. I think. Yeah. Um, because 604,000 is a lot more than we all thought, right? That's true. And Lance has done this before. He has done, and I'll let him tell you that because he knows better than I do. Uh, and so, let's, yeah, let's just come on up now.
uh, cabling, phone, you need to do some land excavation to prepare the site for the pad to house the modulars, you have to um, make accommodation for stormwater, and there isn't a connection right off of 3rd Avenue to tie into because of the new overlay. So it would need to install a stormwater infiltration trench within the, the footprint of the property. So all of that was some costs that weren't incorporated into the initial uh, phase of this uh, examination. If there's any questions, please stop me as I'm, I'm going along here. So that initial site development would be a phase <coughs> one. And then a phase two. Wait, how much yeah, is phase one? Uh, approximately $50,000. And again, I think um, what I'll, I'll preface the, the comment on my num numbers, uh, financial numbers at this point, it's a cost opinion at this point, which is the lowest order of co confidence in cost estimating, because there's a lot of information I just don't know yet, so you have to build some contingency in to your estimating until you can refine the numbers and develop better information. So this number is a cost opinion. As we get closer, you'll provide us a detailed yes. report of what the cost would be for each phase. That's that absolutely correct. Uh, so 50000 for phase one. And then uh, phase 1A or phase two, if you like, is once the site has been developed and prepped, then you can make the utility connections. And that's roughly about $80,000, $85,000 to do all of that work to make the, the modulars functional. Um, for all the city governance. And then phase three is once the utilities are stubbed out, ready to go, bring the modulars on site and get them set up. So, uh, and just running with the numbers at this point, that's approximately $36,000 for the modulars. And that's an annualized cost. And estimated at this point is about $3,000 per month, so that gets to the annual 36000 for the rental fee for the, for the modulars. I, I won't um, stay too far on this point, but the city does have options. <coughs> Once you bring modulars on site long term, you can do different types of financial, um, you have different financing options. You can do a rental, you can do a lease to own, you can do a, a purchase to own. So, and there are disadvantages and advantages of each option. That, that can be fleshed out more as we, we get further into this. Then the next cost, uh, as it's bringing into the, the site, is there's some additive costs that don't come with the actual rental of the, of the units. Uh, skirting, providing ADA ramps for accessibility to the spaces, and, and so those costs are estimated at this point to be about $25,000. And then um, a cost of moving all the, the staff from this building over to the, the new offices. And that's approximately a one-time cost estimate of 10000 each direction, so 20000 total. Once the staff is out of the building and the functions have been moved over to the uh, modulars, then the abatement for the asbestos could be, begin. And that's estimated at approximately $40,000 which uh, if you want more detail I can go in, but essentially it's removing the carpet, uh, getting rid of the vinyl tile that, and the mastic that has the asbestos in it, as well as any other asbestos that may be discovered once uh, we go into the uh, abatement phase. After that, uh, the phase could uh, is HVAC for the air quality piece of this is to install new heating and ventilation in, into the facility. And this is estimated at approximately $150,000. After the HVAC system has been installed, um, yeah. you can either do the carpet and the, the flooring replacement, which I would expect that there would be some subflooring to replace because of the abatement phase, as well as maybe some soft spots that just have to be shored up structurally. And uh, that phase is estimated at about $35,000. And then the painting and patching for some of the disruption uh, during the abatement, as well as just freshening up the building at that point, it is estimated at about $45,000.
And then there are a couple of the extra costs that go into this is renting some heated storage units because not everything will fit into the modulars. Uh, there, there may be some things like uh, permanent public records that we want to keep and sort through in a heated facility, secure facility, rather than trying to make it fit in, inside of the temporary office uh, structure. So that's a, a subtotal of about $489,000, and then a contingency of 20% on that, which is $97,000 bringing it a subtotal to just under 600000 or 587 and then some sales tax to, that uh, King County, of course, wants to get their piece, and that brings it up to at that 640 or 639 and, and change. So that was the, uh, what I was asked to look at, and it has expanded just because there were additional things that just hadn't had an opportunity to be fleshed out yet. So as we're getting into this, it, it has expanded a little bit in, in scope. And any questions at this point? Yes, uh, your contingency, I know 20% is a fairly normal amount of contingency for an average project, but on a building this old, when you're pulling up the subfloor uh, on the soils we have around here, is that really... What are the chances we're going to find some significant framing issues that need to be fixed down there, some foundation replacement issues? Uh, yeah. There are certainly places that feel softer than just a fuzzy subfloor. 20% was a, a, a number I arrived at, but your point is well taken. Uh, there, there could be a contingency. We may need to adjust a little higher. I, I hope the numbers are a little soft at this point, but uh, that contingency would absorb that. As not being present, could any cost for moving walls or remodeling the inside, right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Are there questions? That is the direction. No, there's no updating of, of the, the restroom facilities. So, and I guess what I want to add to all of this as well is. Um, Last year, I think you know that I went to uh, the legislature for a capital improvement. Um, the legislature did not pass the capital budget, so nobody got it. Um, I am talking again with legislators again, and we're going to put in for more funding. Hopefully, some of it will pay for it, and we'll be able to replenish funds if we do this project, and also going after money to upgrade our bathroom. And there's lots of grant money too, where people are not taking the course of the Okay, so to finish the job, meaning to update the bathroom, paint the walls, throw the carpet down, what is the total cost? Not just a little, but the beginning cost, or the phase one, the phase two. How much is the overall cost? The bathroom, I don't know what that is. That's the bathroom right now. I believe you, Richard has said somewhere around 400000 was for the whole entire project. Well, now we've got $640,000, and we've still got bathrooms from 1812. Right. <coughs> and that was where I was led to believe that that was the top end of the at the time before Lance was even hired. And we didn't have to kind of work for them to have kind of experience to deal with it. However, this, and I mean, it may be a small concept, but this doesn't include the pain in the park. It doesn't include the bathroom. That's something we really have a shot at with, with grants, but and um, with the state for the ADA. Right, you're going to have to turn those bathrooms into something. I, I mean, right now they're they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to have to make them ha I, I, proper word handicapped accessible. ADA, ADA compliant. Okay, yeah. ADA compliant under the sink in the stall. Um, we certainly can look at that. The floors <coughs> droop in 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 play. Um, so we're looking more like maybe a million dollars when this is all done for everything. Can Not under this project. That would be a separate project. I I guess it goes back to what we were talking about before. We put the lipstick on the here and uh, can we get a cost of what it would take to do what we would like to see the building look like because we move out, do this, move back in, then when we do decide to do what needs to get done, then we go move out, do the upgrade, move back in. So I guess I know we're looking for
for grant money. But, but I want to ask, I, I guess my question to you when you say the upgrades are what we want to do in the building, I don't know what that means. Well, there was talk of moving chambers down in here, removing some walls, removing some walls in some of the other office areas, and basically remodeling the entire inside right. of City Hall. I know we're looking at the possibility of getting grant money to do that, but then it gets back to um, this abatement issue. Is the abatement that, <coughs> we budget, that we're budgeting for here necessary, or is there a way to seal the asbestos? Because it's believed that the primary asbestos causes in the flooring. Is there a way to seal this flooring, put carpet over top of that seal, to, to bring the cost down until we know whether we can do this project, do the entire project mm -hmm. with the building versus going a little bit now, a little bit later. Because I would say cost if you could do it all at once, everything you want to do. It's a big number, but it's cheaper in the long run. And I'm just wondering. Does code allow you to just seal up? Well, that's what I'm asking. I, I can't speak to the particulars of the building code, but I know typically you, you can if the asbestos remains undisturbed, it's allowed to remain in place. I think the concern though is knowing some of the conditions of the subflooring as well, that that it may not be the most cost effective way to, to approach it. Um, I'll, I'll just say since Richard uh, had shared a little bit of my background that I've worked through a, a modular project before, and how I looked at this is, I, I looked at this through the lens is, what if we had to stay in the modulars for a period of time? So these uh, modulars would be fully functional to provide city core services. And that being said, um, there's an opportunity when you're out to explore and investigate a little bit if you want to expand the scope and do some additional exploratory work uh, for some of those ideas that you're expressing, as well as pursue and see what's available for grant funding or other funding opportunities. And, and I mentioned this more because that was something that John Jones wanted to have, to have explored and wanted to know if it was an option. He's unfortunately, he's not here to expand on, on what he had to say and kind of in the same way I think more why I'm bringing it up. Um, because they're absent, and I know that that's their, their feeling in the direction that they would like to see it to go, unless there was justification somehow steering it away from that. And so I think it's something we do to research and, and make, determine if it's an option. One of the things that doesn't address um, Councilor Cave is the air quality problems are getting worse. And to do that, we have to go to the floor, I mean, or the ceiling with the HVAC. So that, it's kind of a catch-22 in that way we look at it, so... Oh, and if I could maybe put a stand on this a little bit more. Um, one of the things that I had thought about, Council Member Cade and all, all the council members, is um, I referred to this as a banded once before, and it's really a poor choice of words. Basically what it is is just kind of um, buying some life in this building, because what I would like to see happen is that we move forward with going after funding to remodel City Hall, put on a second floor. But what I think would be the ideal thing to approach this is have citizen comment, you know, have a committee that's made up of the citizens and, and get a full plan in place and stuff like that. And all of that takes time to develop. And this would, because by the time you were able to accumulate the funding with grants and having an actual plan and all of that stuff, because first you have to get a grant to get the plans and the drawings and all of that, and then get grants for this and grants for that. And it can be done. I mean, that's how cities do it. But it would be really nice to make sh sure that the, the people that live in this community have buy-in and have a piece of that, you know, where you've got this community, they work on it, they're doing with this, and, and um, have a say on what their city hall looks like. Because me, personally, I want to keep the facade just the way it is. It's perfect for our town, and we're a quiet little town. I have to see that, but get the invite and go up, you know, and do another floor. There's been talk of mixed use, you know, we can rent out some space and help pay for it. All those things are great ideas, but to have complete funding to do those kind of things takes us down the road a way. So my thoughts were, if we can get this and make this a very safe environment for the people that live here and that visit City Hall, and, you know, 
through their day-to-day -day functions in here. It's a nice, safe environment, and it buys us time to do what the city would like to do with City Hall and make it a good functional building and, and accessible for all the citizens. And we'll have more of the context at that time, too. There's one, to me, there's one obvious option that we're leaving off the table, and one is to vacate this premise into the temporary structures and then do a complete evaluation of what needs to be done, complete the cost, and don't move back in until we have a plan on what the long-range outlook is for the structure. Don't spend any money on it until we know where we're going to go with it. And if we're out, then we can explore what's underneath the floor. Well, I have my thoughts on that. I like to hear what council thinks. <laughs> What is the cost for us to have the board of work? Three thousand a month. Three thousand a month. How many square feet are you talking? Yeah. Oh, um, not very big. <laughs> each one is twenty-eight by sixty. Oh, so it's like a trailer? Yeah. yeah. Double, wide. double wide. Oh, okay. So like the school portable. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. the cost of storage for the items that. The yeah. rough estimate on, on that cost was about 300 a month. Oh, so that's that's great. Great. <coughs> Depending on the size of the unit. Right. So, I mean, because I see the phase in City Hall project being a multi phase project, as was originally presented, or not presented, but discussed. I know that you and I have had discussions with him about what he like to see and I'm kind of in agreement with it. And, you know, we want to maintain this building, but we also need to look at the long-term future of the city and what the needs of the city are. And now that we've got adjacent properties with the complex, we might want to look at a true development plan and maybe move it into portable to give us the opportunity to look at what this building's going to cost to upgrade because there are a lot of unknowns because of the age of the structure. And then 640 could easily turn into well over a million dollars. And, you know, just plan on long term occupancy and portable. Is and there the 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 potentially, <laughs> potentially. I mean, you're talking about only three or four months. I'm talking maybe, maybe plan for a year. Let's get the work done that needs to be done to determine what the needs are for this building and how feasible it is to, to upgrade it. And then, Develop a plan for city. And there's where you get your citizen advisory committee come in because when they have the the uh, information on what this building contains and what it's going to take to upgrade it, there's where you get your citizen buy-in. Because then they're going to see what the cost is. They're going to know why that cost is there and be presented to that group, and then they look for the idea. <coughs> and the well, and I think the citizen buy-in is going to create your cost. And because they're going to have the input of what they want their city hall complex to look like, that's going to determine how it gets developed and where that cost comes from. So that's going to be, I mean, in my mind, and I, I could be thinking about this wrong, but in my mind, that's going to take months and years to develop. It isn't, you're not going to get a committee together and they're going to have it figured out in a month and then go after the funding. Because I think at one time, and this was just a rough number, to remodel this whole thing and like build to get this and do a new city hall, leave the facade, it's five million dollars. Just for this building alone? Just for this building. So my question is, is why, why would it take moving everybody out of this building to do an evaluation? They couldn't an evaluation be done while everyone was in there? Because you'd be disrupting the asbestos <coughs> and yeah, you can't look under the table. Once you, you start tearing stuff up to look at what the problem is, then you created the need to, to basically quarantine the building and close them basically. Correct. Yeah. Well, one of my hopes is, um, you know, and, and one of the requests was to um, the legislature last year to um, Representative Freeman was, okay, give us five million for this, you know? <laughs> but, I knew that they have grants, I mean, and to them, five million for a capital project is not that much money, you know, but, um, but it's a lot to give to a small municipality, but think we could still even get half of that 
for us that you know going after that funding and that gives us a nice little start start, start going after it and doing this long range plan. The Lake Control Fire Station is probably about million dollars. It's bigger than this building. You know, so that's why I'm thinking. You know, we got some property. Maybe we <coughs> look at what the cost is to look at what we need to do to this building to keep it usable. But maybe it's not long term in our long term interest to have it be city hall. Maybe it needs to be some other type of structure. It's not city hall. Don't own the city. We still have to look to the school district. That's to be used as something related to city hall or city hall. So you still have to take care of the asbestos and all the other issues. You can't rent it out to somebody else. Right. Right. I don't think the school district really wants it back, but. So, and I give one thing, um, you know, and I didn't mean to spend this much time on this topic, um, because this is just projected, it's just fun. So we're not even bringing it to council for approval. This is, these are three funds that are going to be closed out that we would have the money in our coffers to pay for this project. They're one-time funds for one-time funds. But we're expecting to spend them in 2015, so we do need to discuss it. Well, it's budgeted there, but we're, council has to approve it. We but, don't we, it. but we can't say no either. We got air quality issues. We have to do something. We're obligated right. now that we have the knowledge. This is just kind of a blush, and he still has a lot of work to do on firming everything. Uh, I mean, we're probably not even going to be looking at it until spring and summer. I'm thinking. Correct. Uh, so the, the staff has to deal with this for the winter again. Yeah, we're trying to take steps to address that. Um, what are you doing to protect yourself from the ones who get sick? Well, that, what we're doing is, according to um, what Stacy said about getting a dehumidifier might help stop the mold growing. Yeah. That's one thing. That's, well, that's what's bothering the people the most right now is the mold in the air. And it, it's not at huge levels yet, but it gets worse every year. We're also thinking of, of replacing the air conditioners with heaters, heaters slash air conditioners, so we can have air being circulated. What we do in the summer, when it's hot, is we have those air conditioners going in and, and the air is coming in and it's fine in here. Not great, but it doesn't, we're not safe, as you can tell. So we, we're going to do that pretty soon because it's getting to that point now where the windows are closed and people are starting you know, to feel it. And so we're going to take measures to protect staff in that way. So that's it, that's what it is now. Hasn't that Yeah, that's awesome. So we have already put purifiers in. We have purifiers, and we might even double those. They seem to help somewhat. It's, it's, it is, you know, when I told staff we we're going to be here through the winter, because we thought we might get out earlier. You know, there was like, oh God, another winter, but you know, I said, we're gonna do it, so we're gonna take steps to make sure that we have this, the, the, the things in place to make this air better until we move out, because we have, and, and Lance has said this, you know, we can't rush this. We have to, it's gonna take time to do the grant, the land, the land and the site development, and we can't do that in the winter. So that was, that was the end of that once we found that out. And so, it is what it is, but we're going to deal with it the best we can. And I said, if we have to open windows, sometimes we will. Hopefully the heater, the air conditioner, we're looking into that now, will be able to take care of some of the air problems and keep the air going um, during the day. And then at night we turn on the um, purifiers and they help, help also. And we've had them probably since July. So they have, it seems, it's hard to tell because in the summer you have all the air coming and going. But, and I, I can't tell you from last year this time, because I didn't get sick until February and March. Um, so, you know, you don't want to, like, talk to that too much about it because you have to do what you got to do, but you also want to be concerned about their well-being and it's here as much as it is here. You know, it really is. And so they know we're working towards this. They appreciate that. And I know this is a, this is a lot of money, and I don't take it shit. Even though we have this money, that's a one-time, you know, uh, money for the six to $700,000, we want to use it wisely. I get that, too. So we want to look at it, and maybe, you know, once we get out before we can even do the abatement, they're going to look at everything. And Lance did speak with the gentleman's company, the guy who came out and did the first testing. He's going to do some more testing, is that right? Correct. Right. right. Just to see how deep the abatement goes. Is it, is it uh, elsewhere besides <coughs> the floor? He's going to do a little more. <coughs> right. That's my fear. Yeah. I'm with Josh. I don't know the 20% is going to cover what needs to right. be done here, and that's why I think we need to have a long-range plan in place to be in portables for a long time. Because I have a feeling once we start tearing this building apart, I mean, it's going to be hard to get to a situation where you don't have to demolish it. It's a really old building, and probably not much work has been done besides the site, is what I understand. And that's um, why we also need to make, reach out to the school district and find out 
how badly we have to maintain it. You know, do we, do we really have to? It's not on the historical register, so we don't have to maintain it for the historical purposes. They would like, you know, the original terms were that we use this building, but the building's to a point where if it was still a school district and they were trying to use it as a school, we know where it would be right now. It'd be leveled and they'd have a new structure built because they can't jeopardize the kids' home. Right. And you saw what they did in Central Auburn. Okay, it was a $67 million project. Okay, so, you know, they tore an old structure down and put a new structure up because that's what was needed and that's what they would do here. And that's the situation we're in and that's the thing that's that putting lipstick on a pig ain't solving the problem. I don't know if I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll explain it to you later. Thank you. I was just wondering what else we have, what other inspections we've done, not necessarily uh, for the asbestos, but for trying to estimate what other contingencies we might run into. Uh, have you got to move it down into the crawl space to check the framing in the fountain, you know, the footings and all that? I mean, you know, are we, when we tear up the sub floor, what other disasters do we find? Yeah, I don't know. Really that to my knowledge, there hasn't been a full building assessment con conducted. Because if we're going to, the moment we start pulling up the subfloor, you find out what's under the subfloor, and we should be ready for it to be uh, left. It's it's going to be scary. scary. And, and, and if I was unclear, for the carpeting, what this was envisioned wasn't to pull up all the subfloor, right. but, but there may be a spot replacement. If, if there's a spot where the subfloor is squishy, good chance you'll pull it up and find out that it's actually the subfloor is fine and that the joints under it is falling apart. <coughs> oh, I guess, let me ask you this. I'm, I'm just curious, and I've got my mind going. <laughs> as far as a long run, I mean, are you trying to figure out or you want maybe staff to kind of investigate what it would take to maybe like talk about some of the remodeling we had talked about, like flipping this around, the new windows. Well, we know if we, get I mean, to, like if we <coughs> start going this direction, we find out that it needs major repairs. Uh -huh. If we start investing in the major repairs, we need to figure out what the inside of this is going to look like. The major repairs should be sure, sure. a full-scale remodel if it gets to that point. Well, otherwise, otherwise, we're going to put money into something, invest into this structure, move back in and as soon as we think we got grant money, all grant money usually involves matching funds, right. especially for projects like this, um, right. then here we are spending good money after bad and that's what I want to try to avoid. Well, and and I, I understand, and we have to do something because right. it's a health crisis as far as I'm concerned. Right, and part of my thinking is this is money that um, would be well spent and by the time we're able to do a full remodel and stuff, it would need to be replaced anyway, like carpet. And and so my concern is that that everything's based done. on the people that are in office at the time and we would get this fixed up uh -huh. enough to last for long enough that all of us aren't here anymore and then it's up to someone else to try to figure out. Sure. Passing the problem on to the future, if we have a chance to address it now, why don't we? I mean, and, and the lipstick on the pig, Stacy, it's like there's mold on that wall, let's paint over it, but the mold's still there. Hang okay. a picture over the hole. Uh, to make it look good, we make it look good, but the problem still exists. And and my concern is that that's what we're doing. We're kind of the, the band-aid approach. We got to do something, and we're not doing the minimal amount, which could be sealing it. I don't care if it's putting polyurethane. I, I just don't floor. think we can legally do that. And uh, I I think it's possible. I think it can be done because the whole idea is just to ensure that the asbestos doesn't get into the air. Right, but I think you could be sealing the mold the at the same time. Once you find it and there's an issue with it, it needs to be pulled because you know it's there. You can't. I, I don't believe you can seal over it. And the HVAC effect can be from the ceiling or from the floor. It can come from that, that's an it, it can come from either direction, but that's one of the, the components that would have to actually be engineered out to make sure that you have the proper circulation in the building, both the supply and the return air. Very critical component, and that's one of the issues with the structure today, is you don't have the, the return and, right. and the supply. But I guess what I'm getting at is, if it's something that has to come up through the floor, then it may be necessary. Yes. Correct. So I guess um, in moving forward, I mean, like I said, this is money that's going to be sitting there in the budget, and what it's sitting there for is the council's aware that you're going to be fully briefed, and we're not doing anything, obviously, without council's approval. And, and I know 
when Lance is still working on this, he's only been working on it for a month on top of his other day-to-day -day duties. And so he has had ample time to investigate this. He was able to pull some things together so we can have an idea. I'm sure there's more investigating and more stuff that's going to be done yeah. before we even start coming down and putting numbers and looking. So when we'll, we're going to be revisiting this, and we just wanted you aware that these funds are being closed. This is the, what the money, where we're putting it, and this is what it's earmarked for. So, and, and a good explanation on the process and where you're at. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. One last um, thing on this is that we. I talked spoken with Lance about having better numbers by the end of November so we can have this be a better placeholder to see where we're at. Um, so we're going to work, he's working on that constantly with everything else he's doing. And uh, so hopefully we'll have something better for that. So like Leanne said, the mayor said it's just the placeholder now. We come to you before we did anything. And obviously you would know that. And that if any um, changes we're going to make in here, we'll let you know about fixing how we deal with the air quality and what we find out as far as when they come back in to do a little bit of testing. I'm probably calling you again, Lance, in just a second. Because we have the other project for next year. Um, is 